شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمداً عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise and thanks belong to Allah, the Most High, the Exalted, the Most Merciful. We thank Him and we seek His help and aid and forgiveness. And we ask Him to protect us from the evil of ourselves and the sins that we commit. Indeed, whosoever Allah guides, no one can lead astray, and whosoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance. And every misguidance will be in hellfire. Amma ba'd. One of the diseases that are inflicting humanity today and because of it they are suffering is that of depression whether this is happening in non-muslim countries or muslim countries with non-muslims or with muslims it is an affliction for one to find himself and herself being surrounded by sadness, loss of hope, loss of ability or at least the feeling or perception of loss of ability to change their life and the circumstances around them. And the more, subhanAllah, the more that a country or a society or a piece of land marches towards modernization, the more that they find themselves victim of that illness. And so our khutbah today, bi'idhnillah azza wa jal, is an attempt to try to understand how we can find in what Allah had revealed to us a solution to this issue. How we can protect ourselves from it, or if we already are victims of it, how we can triumph against it. How can we rid ourselves of these feelings so that we are no longer victims, but alhamdulillah are in control of our lives. So first of all we say, that as a Muslim, as a human being, you're not immune to feelings of sadness. You're not immune when it comes to anxiety. In fact, the shaitan knowing that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to come close to him might launch an advanced and an extra attack against you because of that thing. Trying to make you sadder. Trying to make you lose hope. Trying to make you lose doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time we say that since you believe in Allah since you know his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should and you do have tools to be able to combat the shaitan and to be able to combat those feelings. You do have these tools. It's the problem is that we sometimes forget about these tools or sometimes we do not know about them. We really do not know about them. So first you have to realize that as long as you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should ever, never, ever lose hope in Him. And never lose hope that it was ever is going to come and that your future is always going to be bright. And that any doubt you have about this comes from the shaitan. So Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Allah says the shaitan promises you poverty 
and command you to commit indecency. And Allah promises you forgiveness and bounties from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want you here to compare two types of promises. The shaitan promising poverty. That is, the shaitan comes to you and tells you that tomorrow is going to be worse. Tomorrow you're going to be poor. Unless you disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, tomorrow and the week after and the week after and the year after, you're going to be miserable, you're going to be poor, you're going to, be, you're going to lose stuff. If you don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shaitan injects this in your mind and this in your heart. So whatever discomfort you have about the future, whatever anxiety you have about the future, gloomy predictions that is going to get worse and worse and worse when you have this thought or that pattern of thought, you have to realize that it's coming from who? From the shaitan. Because what is the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal? Maghfira wa fadl, forgiveness and bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you know Allah very well, you know him to be Al-Kareem, the generous. You know him to be Al-Ghani, the rich. You know him to be as sami' the all-hearing. You know him to be the one whom you, if you call upon, he hears you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can never have doubt about your future as long as you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning your future you should always be bright. And you always expect the best, not the worst, but the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you call upon him, what is he going to do? He's going to answer your call. That if you need something from him, what is he going to do? He will give you what you need. That if you are in discomfort, or something is bothering you, and you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is he going to do? He's going to solve your problem. And if that is what you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is the thing that you will receive from him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a hadith, I will do, I will be at what my slave thinks of me. So think about me what you wish. What is it that you're going to be thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the thing that you're going to be receiving. So if you think Allah is going to be forgiving, Allah is going to be merciful, Allah is listening to you, Allah will save you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there right there for you to help you. If you turn to him, Allah azza wa will be that for you. Allah azza wa jal says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Indeed, the awliya of Allah azza wa jal, those who love Allah and Allah loves them, they will have no fear and no anxiety. لا خوف عليهم, no fear and no anxiety about the future and no sadness about the past. Again, it does not mean that they do not ever experience sadness. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he speaks to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tells him that you do experience sadness, and the sadness that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has experienced, that is mentioned in the Quran, is sadness about the hereafter. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ لَا يَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ We know that you're saddened by what they are saying about you. They are rejecting your message and saying this and that about you. You are sad because of it. لا يحزنك الذين يسارعون في الكفر. Do not be saddened by those who are rushing to disbelief. Allah Azza wa Jal knows that His Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam experiences sadness. The prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal experience sadness. The Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam experience sadness. إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن. When the Prophet ﷺ is speaking to his companion Abu Bakr, who is the best believer after Muhammad ﷺ in this ummah, what does he tell him? Do not be sad. So they do experience sadness, but that sadness does not become the dominant pattern or feeling in their life. It does not overtake their life. They experience that. Hmm? Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ lost his son, Ibrahim. What does he say about it? وَإِنَّ عَلَى فِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَمَحْزُنُونَ You are saddened by your departure, Ya Ibrahim. So the Prophet ﷺ feels that. Feels that sadness. But the Prophet 
and the prophets alayhim salam ajma'een and those who follow them they know how to process that sadness they know what to do with it so it does not overtake their life does not debilitate does not become a handicap and they can move on to better things they know that Allah destined things for a reason so when Allah says the awliya of Allah they have no sadness it does not mean that they experience nothing but when they experience it they can take it they process it and they can move onward they find in it inspiration they find in it wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal and they move on so first of all if you are a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal you should always have hope لا تيأسوا من روح الله يعقوب عليه السلام despite his ordeal not knowing where his son was what does he say to his children لا تيأسوا never despair of Allah's mercy who are those who despair of Allah's mercy he says the disbelievers as long as you have iman you never despair of Allah's mercy and you never lose hope and you, if you have hope بإذن الله عز وجل you'll not be depressed if you have hope, because depression is about loss of hope. And if you have hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, you will not be depressed by the idnillah, or at least you'll be able to overcome it. You'll be able to combat it. So always have hope and never lose it. Always expect the best, not the worst from Allah Azza wa Jal, and keep going forward. Now, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us something. Tells us that whatever adversity or grief we have that we've encountered in the past, we lost something. And that loss is triggering a tidal wave of sadness. And we cannot escape it. We lost a loved one, child, parent, a spouse. Or we lost something important in our life. Whatever that thing may be. And we keep revisiting that incident, and that is generating sadness. Well, we understand from Allah Azza wa Jal something that is very important. He says, whatever misfortune you are going to see on the face of this earth around you or in yourself, this has been recorded and documented in a book before you've been created and before the creation of this earth. And this is easy for Allah Azza wa Jal. Why does Allah tell you this? So that you do not become sad because of the bad things that had happened to you. And don't become too proud because of the good things that are coming your way. Meaning if you know that that bad thing that had happened had to happen. And it had to happen in this particular way at that particular time. And nothing you could have done or anybody else could have done could have stopped it. And that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That closes the door for the law. Maybe perhaps if I had done this thing or that thing, I could have changed that outcome. That completely shuts the door on what if. I could have done this or I could have done that or he could have done this or she could have done that. You know for sure that you could not have changed this because this is what? That is Allah's decree. It's not that if you were more talented or smarter or this or that, you could have changed the outcome. Allah Azza wa wanted it to happen this way. So that should bring comfort to a person's heart that this had to happen this way and this is Allah's decree. But is it an oppressive decree? It's a wise decree. That is, we understand that Allah Azza wa destines these things for a reason because if you know Allah, you know Him to be Al Hakim. And Allah then does things for a reason wisdom, benefit. Whether you're able to detect this or not, Allah Azza wa does it for that. So then here, your Iman gives you comfort that it did not happen chaotically it didn't happen randomly it's not just i am a random victim no allah azza wa jal has chosen that this would happen to me and there's a reason for it what is this reason some of the benefits of misfortune and grief in islam that you will find in the revelation is that first of all allah azza wa jal wants to take your sin away 
And that Allah Azza wa wants to elevate you to in heaven, degrees by which you'll not be able to reach without this misfortune. So you're going to lose part of the dunya to gain in the hereafter. You will get, you lose part of the dunya for you to gain in the hereafter. And if Allah Azza wa Jal were to show you that exchange in the hereafter, would you be willing to lose such and such? Would you be willing to lose this position or that person? In exchange for this position, that eternal position, that eternal rank in Jannah, if he were to show you that on the day of judgment and inside Jannah, you'd say, yes, ya Allah, and even more. I wish you would have taken more from me because what I see right now is not only worth it, it is more than worth it. We understand that our loss is in this dunya is temporary. That whatever difficulty we're going through is temporary and it has an end to it. And if you know that it has an end to it, it's not going to depress you, it's not going to keep you down. Because you know that every pain, every discomfort has an end. Allah Azza wa says about the believers when they enter Jannah, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّا الْحَزَنِ They say, Alhamdulillah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you have removed all sadness from us. And then they continue to thank Allah Azza wa Jal, الَّذِي أَحَلَّنَا دَارَ الْمُقَامَةِ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا نَصَبٍ وَلَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا لُغُوبٍ He says, and he had made us inhabit that eternal abode, Jannah, out of his rahmah, out of his fadl, out of his bounty. No kind of tiredness, discomfort, pain is ever going to touch us. So they praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that internally and externally they are completely happy. And Allah had eliminated all sadness from their lives. So there is always an end to it. And if you lost someone dear to you in this life, know that there's always a compensation from Allah Azza wa Jal for it. If you lost something valuable, it's a job, it's money, whatever it is, valuable in this life, know that there is always compensation from Allah Azza wa Jal for it. Because if you ha encounter a misfortune, a musibah, and you say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we belong, we are going to return to Allah Azza wa Jal, we belong to him and we will return to him. Allahumma ajurni fi musibiyati. Allah reward me in my misfortune and compensate me for it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says if he says this Allah will compensate him for it. Dunya wa akhirah. Dunya wa akhirah. You will see compensation for it. Dunya wa akhirah. The one that you love, if you lo if you lost them. That loss may bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and you will continue to make dua for them. And if Allah unites you both in heaven because of that loss, then that is a ni'mah, that's not a loss. If Allah has taken money from you that may tempt you, that may take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal, a position that may take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal, and because of it, you're in Jannah, that's not a loss, that is a gain. So you have to see in every misfortune, disguised in it, hidden in it, a path that Allah Azza wa Jal is paving for you to enter Jannah. It is only then left up to you and to me. Whether you want to take advantage of that ni'mah or you want to reject it. Because it looks like a misfortune. It looks like something that should cause sadness. But it in fact, if you look at it carefully, Allah Azza wa Jal is not bringing evil to your life. Allah Azza wa Jal there is, wants to take you to Jannah. Except that now, this is how it looks. Take advantage of it, and you will be closer to the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Also believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing him well gives the person a connection, gives the person an outlet that when they have pain they know where to turn to, who to talk to and then faraj, comfort will soon follow. 
إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ He says, indeed, Ya'qub, again, Ya'qub alayhi salam, going through this great discomfort, great pain, loss. What does he tell his children? He says, I complain, or I am taking my complaint of this sadness, this severe sadness that I have, big sadness, bathi wa huzni, any type of sadness, I'm going to take it to Allah Azza wa Jal. It is okay for you, if you're sad, to seek the counsel of other human beings, to seek their advice, to see how you can solve your problem. And, meaning, and this is really one of the ways that you would feel better about what you're going through. Just to share that pain that you have with someone else. They can have insight, they can have comforting thoughts, comforting words. So you don't always have to keep it to yourself. Talk to other people. And it's important that you talk to other people. The wiser, the more pious they are, the better. But we say more important than that, not to negate this, but more important than it, is that you talk to Allah Azza wa Jal. And whatever you have inside, whatever is troubling you, complain. Don't, not, don't complain to human beings. Share your thoughts with human beings. But you want to complain, tashku, don't complain to human beings. This is happening to me, that's just happening to me. Why is that happening? Complain to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ashku, share that with Allah. And that is here the importance of dua. Because Allah Azza wa had always given you and access to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially in salah, especially in sujood. So whatever pain you are going through, things that have overwhelmed your life and you don't know how to escape them, how to process them, how to deal with them, and you should go and ask the more knowledgeable how to, whether religiously or in worldly uh, sciences, worldly affairs, how do I deal with this? Go and ask. But also before that, and more than that, ask Allah Azza wa Ya Allah, save me from this. Ya Allah, guide me through this. Guide me out of this. Ya Allah, help me to carry this. Ya Allah, be my aid. Be my helper. Be right next to me. Take that pain away from me. And keep making this dua over and over and over. Because you have to understand that you're not alone. You're not alone. And that Allah is always right next to you, wanting to help you. And when you experience... These negative bad thoughts that come into your brain. There is no hope. You are worthless. You'll never be able to do this. You're the, you're the cause of these problems. Whenever you experience these bad thoughts, again recognize that these thoughts are not from Allah Azza wa Jal. These thoughts are from the shaitan. Or at least they are from our own weak self. But they're not from Allah Azza wa Jal. So stop and say, A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem. This is not true. And again, try to regain hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. That even if there is something, even if we were to imagine something is wrong with me and you, that if you ask Allah Azza wa Jal for help, that thing will go away. That Allah will help you overcome and triumph. So never surrender to the whispers of the shaitan, to the despair that the shaitan tries to plant in your heart and your mind, to try to make you believe that you're a failure. Nothing good is going to come out of you. You are not a religious person. You're not a good person. You're not this, you're not that. Because when you believe these bad thoughts, two things will happen. Even you give up completely on your life. And you'll think it's futile, useless to try to do anything. And that is going to cause you depression. Or you're going to give up on, up on doing something good. I'm not a religious person, I'm not a pious person, I'm not a good person, there's no good trying anymore, I'm just going to be as bad as I can. And that is again is a whisper from the shaitan. And it's only going to compound your problem, not going to solve it, it's only going to compound your problem. Because when you do this, the shaitan is even closer to you, and when the shaitan is, is closest to you, he's going to torment you. The last thing I want to say about this, bi'idhnillah azza wa jal, is that when you are closer to Allah azza wa jal, so the general medicine is to be closer to Allah. When you're closer to Allah, Islam, Iman, fills your life and gives you a purpose. One of the causes or reasons for having depression is because we don't have a purpose. We don't have a reason to live. So you're living aimlessly. And also you have a lot of free time. 
So for some of us, we have a lot of free time. So a lot of time to think, a lot of time to receive the whispers of the shaitan, and then not a lot of things to do with our time. Not, not, not another time, another, a lot of things to do with the skills that Allah had given us. But when you have iman, it tells you, first of all, that you have a purpose and that you need to develop a purpose. What is this purpose? Your purpose is Jannah. Your purpose is the hereafter. But you also need to develop concrete goals that will take you there. That's why salah is a concrete goal. Fasting is a concrete goal. Hajj is a concrete goal. But you do not stop there. Why are you living? To try to develop an answer to this question. I'm trying to memorize the Quran and that is my goal. I'm kind of trying to help other people. I'm collecting charity. I'm building a masjid. You have to find a good cause. And if you cannot find it on your own, you join, you join a cause. Even subhanAllah, a person had asked me, he says, is it good enough for me just to come and clean the masjid? He says, yes, good enough for you to come and clean the masjid. And at least as a start, make that your cause. Make that the thing that you're trying to do. Something to occupy your life with righteousness. And when you take that step, the next step of righteousness will introduce itself to you. And then the third step of righteousness will introduce itself. And the doors of righteousness will open up for you. Because you took the first step. So there needs to be a reason for our living. And then we do not waste our time. Because we know that Allah Azza wa is going to ask us, I've given you these minutes and hours and days and weeks and years. What did you do with them? I didn't just waste them, sit doing nothing. No, I, I invested in my hereafter. I even invested in my dunya. So try to fill your time with as many positive things as possible. Don't leave it for the shaitan to play with you and play with your life. No, take hold of your life and say to yourself, tomorrow I'm going to be doing this and this and this. The day after, this and this and this and so on. So that by the end of the week you find I've accomplished something. It's lack of accomplishment that may introduce bad thoughts and depressing thoughts into your head. So try. And it doesn't, mean, it doesn't need to be something great and spectacular. Small things could be great in the eyes of Allah Azza wa As long as you're taking few positive steps forward. This is what Allah Azza wa wants to see from you. And if you solicit Allah's help and ask for His help, Allah will help you. But push through it and never despair. Never despair. Go back to the stories of the prophets of Allah Azza wa and see how much they've tried and tried and tried until Allah Azza wa had given them what they wanted. Whatever they did. Just to show you and show me that you sometimes need to be patient enough until the thing that you want happens. Never despair of Allah's mercy. And the last bit in the that we have, I want to say, stay connected to the book of Allah. And I mean really, stay connected to the book of Allah. Not just reading it, but understand it. Because if you're having these ideas or whatever, things, you know, things will come your way and my way. And they're going to try and sometimes they're going to bring you down. But when you read the book of Allah, especially you pause and you contemplate some of these ayat, some of these ayat are the medicine to you and me. So a deep, pondered understanding of the book of Allah, and also a deep connection to Allah, especially in your salah. Pray as if it's your last salah. Pray truly asking Allah Azza wa for help. Understand what every movement in your salah, every word in your salah means. And your salah will help you and help me overcome whatever sadness or trouble we have in our lives. So the closer we are to Allah Azza wa the more able we will be to deal with these problems. And even if you have iman, you're going to encounter moments of anxiety, moments of sadness, moments where the shaytan, when you're weak and I am weak and the shaitan is going to try and take advantage of it. You're going to encounter this. But the difference between you and those who do not believe is that you know how to overcome it. And you have the tools for it. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us overcome our sadness, our weakness, to make us of those who on the day of judgment will praise him because he has taken all of our sadness away. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbal Alameen, if we are depressed or if we have a problem, Ya Allah, solve it for us. Ya Allah, take all of our problems away. Ya Allah, take all of our discomfort away. Take all of our distress away. Ya Allah, Rabbal Alameen, make us of those who trust you more than they trust anything else in their lives, who rely upon you more than they rely upon their own selves. 
Make us, Ya Rabbal Alameen, of those who always, when they are troubled by anything, they always turn to you, Ya Arham al Rahimeen. Ya Allah, we ask you that you hear our dua and that you accept our dua. We ask you that you soften our hearts. We ask you that you forgive us all of our sins. Fill our hearts with your love and the love of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Take us to Jannah and make that easy for us and protect us from hellfire and make it that path very difficult and desirable for us, ya Arham al-Rahimeen. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarrif al-qulubi sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik. Allahumma nasaluka al-jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nari wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. وعمل ونسألك من من خير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونسألك الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وأقم الصلاة